Thanks for joining us for Issues and Answers. I am Ian Boyne. Today we focus on the European Union. Uh, the European Union has been giving substantial support to Jamaica over the last 43 years. And we have with us today the head of the European delegation in Jamaica, Ambassador Margaret Sarto Vasilevsky. And she'll be telling us more about the Union and the priority programs that the European Union has in Jamaica. We thank you so much for your company. Ambassador, so good to have you in our studios and on Issues and Answers. Thank you for having me. Ambassador, we have had a relationship now for about 43 uh, years. What would be your own assessment of this relationship between the EU and Jamaica over these years? Well, it's a very important partnership. European Union uh, has been oh, uh, the biggest donor and supporter of uh, Jamaica, but it is very important to stress that it's a partnership. So we do not uh, uh, tell the governments uh, what, what priorities to focus on. We don't make those choices. We accompany the government in the prioritization of needs uh, that the government does itself. So for the current period of seven years, we are support we're supporting three sectors, uh, justice reform, uh, climate change and disaster preparedness, environment protection, and a sm much smaller amount of money for public finance management. Ambassador, why does Europe see international development as critically important? Because Europe has, um, put a lot of attention on international development activities. Why is this so crucial to Europe? Well, this is based on our values. Mm. Uh, human rights, democracy, and rule of law are very much at the core of what EU stands for and uh, what EU represents. You have to remember, of course, that, or perhaps I should uh, uh, say it's, a, it's an important reminder that Europe is, first of all, a peace pro project. Peace, yeah. And since its establishment, and this year is a special year because we're celebrating 60th birthday of uh, uh, European Union, there have been seven enlargements. So Europe today is a, a union of 28 member states. Uh, with freedom of movement uh, uh, inside the 28 member states. That's a very important uh, achievement. But it's not enough to focus on our own prosperity, on our own uh, peace and our own citizens. Uh, the world is a much bigger scene mm -hmm. and we have mm -hmm. to accompany and assist others if we want that peace to be meaningful, not just for citizens living inside the Union, but across the world. And Today, if you think of the major global challenges, uh, no country or no group of countries can address it alone. Uh, this requires cooperation of many actors. So the partnership with Jamaica is also a symbol and or, or, or an example of the uh, partnership that European Union has with the whole region. Um, we share the same approaches to many uh, global issues and we work uh, together also uh, at these for us. When you think of trafficking of drugs, of people uh, today, uh, the roots involve many countries and those kind of corporations are essential. Climate change, uh, all of us need to work uh, together if we want to really protect the planet for our children. And the EU has worked very closely with particular sectors in Jamaica, for example, uh, banana and, and sugar. Tell us about the kinds of projects and the kinds of assistance um, which um, has been rendered by the EU in these areas. Those two particular programs are uh, unfortunately running out soon, but they've been uh, ongoing for uh, almost 10 years. Yeah, they made a significant contribution. They've made a significant contribution and they focused on uh, diversification, on privatiz pri privatization, on uh, training, on, but also on infrastructure, on providing roads which guarantee better access, uh, uh, but also schools. Um, uh, so it's been quite an extensive uh, program. You know, the poverty reduction program has also been another important program of the uh, EU. If we could talk about some of the elements under that program. Poverty reduction program uh, is one of our flagship program pro uh, programs. We allocated more than 40 uh, million euro uh, to that. Uh, 
so far we spend probably about a third of it and it focuses uh, on the poorest communities in terms of uh, infrastructure there are projects uh, on refurbishment of schools uh, health centers there will be seven police stations uh, refurbished and all of those are selected and identified by the government by the relevant ministry um, so this is an example th this is this is perhaps the best way to explain how this partnership works um, that we jointly identify where the needs are, uh, are the greatest but it's also about uh, scholarships, uh, scholarships for students, more than 200 uh, young people benefited from scholarships. Uh, it's also about job opportunities. Um, I think about 10 days ago I visited uh, one of the small projects which is uh, implemented through, together with JSEF on um, quite unusual on ornamental fishing mm -hmm. and there are people in two uh, underprivileged communities in These Kingston, urban areas urban areas Kingston mm -hmm. where in the small spaces uh, at the back of the house okay. they uh, they rear ornamental fish which is in which is highly desired in places in America and Europe um, and so we met a couple of farmers mm -hmm. for one of them it was a transformation from uh, what, what used to be a hobby to now a sustainable small uh, business. So it's, it's quite motivating and rewarding to meet people whose lives have changed thanks to our assistance. As a result of what you have um, done. When you come back, Ambassador, I want to touch on areas of justice where the European Union has been providing critical help. We're speaking to Ambassador, Ambassador um, Vasilevsky. Uh, who is the head of the European Union in Jamaica. The European Union has made a significant contribution to Jamaica's development, and we are talking about some of those uh, programs which fall under the EU. We take a break, but we'll be right back. Productivity, pathway to prosperity. A message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Welcome back, Ambassador Margo Zarto Vasilevsky is our guest on Issues and Answers today. She's the head of the European Union in Jamaica. And we are talking about the, the programs of the EU and the impact that those programs have um, had. At the break, Ambassador, I mentioned the area of justice, a crucial area for um, Jamaica. In, in our crime-fighting efforts, we recognize that unless we deal with the justice side, um, crime containment will continue to um, um, be inadequate. What has the EU been contributing to Jamaica in this area? Thank you for that question because uh, in fact uh, justice is a sector that we supported in our previous financial cycle and we continue to support it. Previously it was more about infrastructure mm -hmm. and equipment and we are still finishing uh, uh, that area but the current program uh, is 24 million, two of which will be implemented through civil society. Very important to stress that because civil society is key to all the uh, uh, support that we uh, give to the government. It's th through civil society that we believe 
uh, you can build bridges between the government policies and how the community uh, understands what they're about and learns how to access it and how to use it. But the current uh, support to justice reform is about better access to justice system for all Jamaicans. Um, but very much also uh, with a gender focus to make sure that women uh, have access, equal access and easy access to justice system and considering the uh, extremely worrying high levels of violence uh, against women that um, I've uh, observed since arrival in this country in September of last year, it is going to be uh, very important uh, to make sure that women do benefit from that. But it's also about um, helping uh, the ministry to reduce the backlog of cases, to modernize uh, uh, some of the facilities, uh, provide equipment for uh, the courts, video equipment mm -hmm. that would make uh, uh, the hearings uh, more accessible. Um, but also Minister, uh, ha Minister Chuck has very ambitious plan to make sure that um, the justice is affordable to uh, those citizens who normally would not go to a lawyer and would not mm -hmm. seek justice because it's too expensive. So it's about providing affordable mediators at the community level uh, or a parish level so that uh, uh, not so many cases will end up going to justice and therefore the system would cope with it better. So I've had the privilege to participate in the uh, trainings for the justices of the peace and um, I, my message to them is that they have to be strong fo focal points inside their communities to which people, uh, and in this case I'm particularly thinking of women and young girls, yes. would feel comfortable to go to, would feel that they would li will listen to them and they will do something about it. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to impact the justice system on uh, many levels. I know human rights is also a particular focus of the European Union. Yes. Um, let's talk about some of the human rights specific issues that you, you might be dealing with on the, your, your programs here. Well, hu human rights is at the core of everything that we do. So uh, equality of rights, uh -huh. but also understanding uh, of basic rights, um, equality of access uh, to uh, labor markets, to justice, to health, uh, is extremely important. So if you look at the health program, which we are uh, still implementing, uh, it's called PROMAC. Mm -hmm. um, 10 days ago, to, uh, we handed over six ambulances. Um, and uh, this is about reducing maternal and child mortality. Uh -huh. uh, Jamaica still has a, a big problem with women not fully understanding their rights and not seeking medical assistance or even examination while they're pregnant. And too often they see the doctor for the first time when they are ready to give mm -hmm. uh, birth. Um, but maybe I'll give another example. We had, um, uh, we organized for International Women's Day an activity that I thoroughly enjoyed. And we visited a couple of schools here in Kingston. And we engaged with, um, when I say we, uh, uh, some of the local experts, uh, but, but also uh, the five member states from the European Union who are present here, um, and uh, some experts from the Gender Studies uh, Institute. And we engage with uh, uh, children uh, between 15 and 17 years old on issues of gender equality, gender violence, uh, and this, these, these worrying statistics of violence against mm -hmm. women. And it was the most rewarding Which exchange, yes. but also quite an eye-opener. Mm -hmm. um, when we were sitting in the first school, mm -hmm. uh, there was a very moving uh, story by, uh, by the master of ceremony who herself had been uh, raped as a child. And so she shared that with the, with the school. And as she was telling the story, mm -hmm. the children told us loud and clear that they feel there are not enough places they can go to with their problems. Mm -hmm. Um, and people either, adults either don't listen or don't do anything about it. Um, and they themselves told us when asked uh, where gender violence is most likely to occur, they said in that order, at home, yeah. at school, uh, and in the church. Yeah, so those conversations are very important yeah. and um, I would love in my time here to go around 
uh, as many schools as possible uh, in Jamaica, not just in Kingston, yeah. to engage with young people in conversations about such issues as their understanding of their own rights as individuals, as human beings, the respect that all of us deserve and have a right to demand, um, but also on wider issues. The children are very keen to know more about Europe. They're very happy to ask questions, sometimes very yeah. direct and yes. difficult, but that's also okay. Um, but also on things that are pertinent to Jamaica today, uh, such as uh, environment protection. That's one of our priorities. I would love to encourage schools uh, to organize days out where they would either uh, clean a beach or uh, an area in their community where we can talk to them about the need to recycle. You have uh, you are blessed with the most incredible nature that really amazes me yeah. every day since I've arrived here. Um, but more has to be done to protect it. Mm -hmm. It will not be unforgiving forever. So, yes. so human rights are part of everything that, that we, we do. do. It's about... Uh, uh, and you take a broad view of human rights, not just civil liberties. Very broad. <laughs> social, social rights, um, clearly. Environmental rights. Yes, mm -hmm. um, but it's also about equality, non-discrimination, uh, and about basically uh, respecting other human beings, mm -hmm. uh, but allowing them to uh, live in peace and prosperity um, as they wish to li live. And of course, you are funded by the citizens of Europe. The citizens of Europe have to be behind the development initiatives of the European Union. Absolutely. The money of the European Union doesn't come from uh, thin air. It's Absolutely. the money of the European taxpayers. Mm -hmm. So that includes also my relatives, my friends, and uh, uh, we have a responsibility as a result. So it's the money of the member states, but more importantly money of the uh, European taxpayers. And we have a responsibility to spend that money well, but also to bring a story back. Wow. What is it that we do? What is it that we change in people's That's lives? True so that European citizens can understand better the added value of Europe um, right. and be in favor of Europe growing True. stronger yes. uh, and continuing in the future. Well, certainly I can attest to the significant impact that um, the European Union has had on, on Jamaica's development efforts. And we celebrate Europe on Monday, May 8th. That's Europe Day. It's Monday, it's actually Tuesday. May the 9th. Oh, but we, big function. we chose to celebrate it on Monday. Yes, great. So we celebrate uh, Europe Day and, and, and we hail the work of the European Union in Jamaica. Uh, its uh, head, Ambassador Vasilevsky, has been our guest on Issues and Answers today. Until next week, when I'll be back, Ian Bourne wishing you a pleasant day. <laughs>